Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and the past couple of weeks I've mentioned that I've run out of batting and I ordered some but it was going to take a while for it to come in and um, so I'm doing these small projects but I also had a request to show you how I piece batting together because I do do that and uh, I just was kind of lazy and was just kind of waiting for my batting to come in. I didn't really want to piece together some batting for a large project. So uh, anyway, today I thought I'd go ahead and show you how I piece batting together to make a piece large enough for a quilting project. Now you really don't need a lot of materials to piece batting together. You just basically need your batting and a sewing machine. But you can buy things like uh, batting tape. I think it's called um, heat press batting tape, something like that. There's a couple of different brands out there. Or you can use um, fusible interfacing. This is what you use for making clothing to uh, help add body to things like cuffs and lapels, collars, that kind of thing. Um, you can use that too and just cut it into strips and fuse your batting together. Now I wouldn't do this on a polyester batting, but if you have a cotton batting or an 80-20 batting, this will work. Um, so anyway, I've got a couple of yards of that here. I don't usually use this though, um, but you can. There's no problem with that. Um, I thought I'd go ahead and start with this piece. Um, this is just a strip that is left over from a, a quilt that was just, um, you know, a little bit longer than what the quilt is. And um, I'm going to cut this in half to make make it easier to demonstrate. Now this is pretty narrow and I'm going to get my scissors all the way through there. And this is an 80-20 batting and this is about about 12 inches wide. So um, if I wanted to do a project that is about that I need about 24 inches then these two pieces put together would work. Um, the thing is, it's narrower on one side than the other. You can see this top piece is narrower than that one, so I would still have to consider what I've got left. And I've got, this is pieces left over from when I was on chemo and I was shedding all over the place and uh, yeah, it's I got hairs all over it. There's another one. So let me move my iron out of the way before I knock that off. It's not on, it's cold. Um, first thing I would do is, you know, cut it to the length that I need and then um, I'm just going to match these. I want to match the sides up. You know, there's sometimes there's a right and a wrong side to your batting. This one, I think this is it. I'm going to overlap these a little bit. So you're going to lose a little bit of... Um, batting doing this. So I've got about, it's about two inches overlap. And that's about all I need. Now instead of, you now you can butt square edges up against each other, but what I like to do is to do kind of a, a serpentine line. That way um, you're not going to have this groove kind of showing up in your quilt top. So I'll make that a little bit narrower. It's about, yeah, that's about two inches. So um, now I'm going to cut and I'm just going to do a gradual curve. I don't want it to I don't want it too steep of a curve. So we have that. I just pull it down and just keep cutting. And adjust this as you need. And almost done. Okay. I'm going to throw this piece away 
and this piece under here. Now my pieces should butt up together really easily. And you know, if you want to, you can go ahead and use your tape or your interfacing and press that. You know, lay the strip on there. You'll need about a two inch wide piece and um, fuse that together. Or you could go to the sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch. So uh, let me show you both ways. I'm gonna cut a strip of the interfacing. And it, you don't have to use your ruler if you don't want to. Just, you know, be careful. Just watch your, watch your fingers. Just keep them away from your blade. So I have a two inch wide strip. And I'm gonna grab my mat. And move this out of the way. I don't think he. I don't think ironing on this is going to hurt that cutting mat, but I don't want to take the chance. So let's go ahead and line these back up. And that's a piece of fabric and then lay the fusible side down. And see if you have the two inch width, then you've got it covered everywhere. And just kind of put those together, just butt them up against each other, those curves. And just make sure it's covering your cuts. What you can do also is Stitch this, zigzag it with your sewing machine, and then if you, what I find is sometimes it wants to pull away. E even though I've got it zigzagged, it will still want to pull. So um, what I usually do is just I sew over it again, but what you can also do is do the tape or your, your uh, fusible interfacing. And you can do that on both sides if you want to, or just on one side. So use the heat according to what your uh, interfacing requires. And just fuse that down. And as I mentioned earlier, I would not do this on polyester batting because it will not tolerate the heat. Uh, but if you have a cotton, 100% cotton or an 80% cotton batting, you should be okay but give it a test first because you don't want to ruin your iron. But I think this works really well. And just let that cool off, but that should hold your batting together. Just like that. And it's laying smooth. There's no you know, there's no stitching there. There's no um, bump. And I'm just gonna fuse the rest of this piece down here. And if you do get a little gap in your batting, it's not gonna matter that much because you've already got it all fused together. So there we go. There's the front. And there's the back. And there's the back of it done with your um, fusible interfacing. Now, if you want to just stitch it, I'll show you how to do that. The okay, first thing you need to do is to set up your machine for a zigzag stitch and Put your batting under there and you can use just your all-purpose thread. <clears throat> and I'm gonna set mine up and then I got this at a 3.0 wide zigzag. <clears throat> and just keep the 
your cut line in the center. And let me, I'm gonna go up to 3.5. A little bit wider. Now I'm starting on the um, interfacing there. So now we're off of the interfacing. So this is just strictly zigzagging it together. And if you cut it the way I showed you, this will um, butt up against each other really well to where you can hardly see the cut line. So it may be a little bit harder to see as you're sewing it. So just take your time. Sometimes I have to stop and kind of pull it apart so I can see that seam. It, it melds together just really well. Okay, I adjusted the camera so you can see a little bit. See from a different angle. See if this will show up a little bit better. But I need to adjust. I'm missing the seam there. There we go. So just adjust your zigzag to whatever width that you need. And of course you can make them a little closer together also. Um, I've got this set at 3.5 on the width and it's 2.0 on the length. If you're having trouble seeing that seam, just pull it apart so you can make sure your seam is going straight under your presser foot right in the middle. Okay, let's see what that looks like. the seam. I have to take my glasses off so I can see that close. Okay, here, here's the seam, just sewn with no um, adhesive tape or anything on it, and uh, you know, that does a pretty good job. If you do find that you have, like up here I knew I was off and you'll have a little gap. If it's small like this, I don't usually worry about it too much, but you know, if it's you know, an inch or so long, then I'll zigzag over it again. You can also, you know, fuse a piece of interfacing on it. But there it is all the way through. I think that turned out really well. And it's nice and flat. You don't really feel the stitches. There's no uh, ridge or anything there. And now I have a wider piece of batting that I can do something with. So uh, if you you know, don't know what to do with your uh, batting pieces. Here's the part that is fused. This is the back side of it. And then here's the other side. There's the interfacing and then here is just the machine stitching down through here. So I think that turned out pretty well. Okay, here's the batting piece that I pieced together. Here is the interfacing. And here is the machine stitched. Um, they're both fine. Um, this one is just as flat as this here. And I think the key is to overlap your two pieces of batting and cutting the line. Um, if you're trying to butt up two square edges, if they're not cut together, they're probably not going to meet as smoothly as these do here. Um, that's been my experience anyway. But this is going to hold unless you wind up with something like I did here where I missed and I knew I had missed that 
while I was stitching and I corrected it as I was stitching. I can always go back over and close that up. I can put a piece of interfacing on there to close it up. Um, but this will hold up to um, any tugging I need to do while it's on the quilting machine and um, you know it just works it works great so you know you can save your scraps of batting and sew them together I usually wait until I've got a project so that I know how large I need to make the piece and um, you know it, it works just fine I've done it in several of my own quilts and you can't tell yeah that they're pieced together at all so um, I don't do that on customer quilts well, of course I'm not quilting for customers anymore but I ne didn't do it on customer quilts I only did it on my own and but it works so there's how I piece together batting um, it works really well for me and I uh, hope it'll give you some ideas on what you can do to piece your batting together and make all those scraps usable for you so I hope uh, you liked this video and if you did please click the like button and if you haven't subscribed yet I hope you will click that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime I hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.